Welcome to Board Game Nation. My name is Gary Blevins. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're thrilled to be back at Board to Beers here in Memphis, Tennessee and talking to Taylor Herndon. She's the founder, creator, and general awesomeness of everything that has to do with Board to Beers. We're thrilled to be back and can't wait to learn more about Board to Beers and Taylor's personal story. Let's make it hot. Taylor, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us today and letting us kind of come in and set up and learn more about uh, what you've got going on here. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. So tell us about the business. So Board to Beer started in 2020, the lovely year that we all know as COVID. Uh, or dumpster fire. Yes, dumpster fire, COVID, either one. It goes hand in hand. So February of 2020, I got my lease. Um, but to rewind a little bit, I started Board to Beers in 2019. My father passed away in July of 2019 from cancer unexpectedly. And it was kind of the push that I needed to do what I want. Um, I've worked for nonprofits my entire life. I have a biology major. I didn't know what track I was going to end up in life, um, but I wanted to open my own business. And I love going to different bars in the city. I love supporting local. And so it just seemed like it would be nice to have a place where people could come together and enjoy each other's company, but actually be able to hear each other and not have to scream at each other over music or you know, a TV show playing in a bar or people just acting rowdy. And so Board to Beers came to mind. Um, I wanted to open a board game bar because my husband and I had a huge collection of board games, which at the time I thought was huge. And now I'm like, oh, that was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Originally we had like 200 games and we're already up to like 750 or 760. So wow. it's grown a lot. But yeah, after everything happened in July, I started a Kickstarter in December of 2019 and it was fully funded in January of 2020. Wow. It sounds like your, your main motivation is that you needed a storage solution for your, for your, yeah. for your rampant collection. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I can relate to that. I know, I know it well. Um, well, that's awesome. Well, congratulations on, on uh, all the success so far. It sounds like despite everything that went on, you've been able to thrive here. It mm. sounds like the things are going pretty well. Yeah, it's been a rough haul. I mean, I never expected for a pandemic to happen in my lifetime, let alone two years now um, and a lot of the question I get is why would you open such a social bar in a pandemic well I had no idea if I had known I would never <laughs> would have done it but I'm glad I did because I mean we have a community here that I would have never achieved anywhere else um, we have people that have come from all over the country that come and they play games and they've met each other and we've built this huge family they love to play games and they come every weekend and we hang out and it's just been this amazing thing to watch it grow and it just it makes my heart happy <laughs> Well, you know, I can't think of a better reason to, to be in a business, for sure. Yeah. Um, and so long as you're not going bankrupt at the same time, <laughs> yeah. then, you know, then um, go do it. If it's what you love doing, mm -hmm. then, then absolutely do that. So, of course, when new people come in, which they are ought to do, mm -hmm. what kind of games do you reach for, for people that might be new to the hobby? We do get a lot of beginners. It's the great thing about Board to Beers is people feel comfortable coming no matter what their skill level is. So a lot of the beginners that we get in, um, we set them down, we kind of ask what type of games they have played, and a lot of times, you know, Mon Monopoly, Uno, <laughs> those kind of things. Right. So we try and branch them out to some great beginner strategy games. Um, my favorite to introduce people to is King of Tokyo, which has been the most played game by far by beginners. Um, we sign the lids to our boxes to keep track of who wins the games, and that one has, it's on its third column now already. Um, so we like to introduce that. If we get two player, um, two players in, that's usually a lot harder because people are like, oh, there's no good two player games. And so we're having to completely change their minds about games and show them some of our favorites like Spirits of the Wild or Blossoms or um, just fun, different things that you usually wouldn't see anywhere else. Um, but of course we do get the people that still want to come in and play Monopoly or they'll bring their own game in. And my thought is if you come in, at least play something you haven't done before. I mean, we have so many to choose from. Why pick the same thing that you have on your shelf at home? Try something new out, meet a new group while you're here, try something that they've brought out, you know, kind of share your passion for the different game styles that you like. So if I'm a solo player and I want to come out and try to find people to play with, how, uh, how does that work here? So we adopt all players. <laughs> we have uh, we've adopted all sorts of people that have come into the bar since day one. We had some that they moved here during the pandemic and had nobody, and they've moved from California or Washington, places like that. And so they come in, and we have our own table that we welcome people to, or we'll set them up with a group if there's a game that they're wanting to play that we are, you know, we have too busy of a night to sit down and play a long game. Um, so a lot of times we'll just adopt them to our table, introduce them to people, and eventually they start forming their own groups with those people later on. 
or they'll bring people they meet from work or school or wherever they are in life. Well, awesome. I know that um, sometimes walking into a new place uh, is challenging for, for folks, particularly my introverted friends. <laughs> they, they have a hard time you know, just walking up and, and being introduced. And it's, I think it's really helpful when there's a mechanism mm -hmm. for them to be able to do that. And it sounds like that's something you've got. Yeah. Here. I mean, it's scary walking into any place. I personally, I have a hard time walking in somewhere by myself and wanting to like get involved there without knowing anybody, but we try and make it friendly from the moment you walk in the door. I mean, my mom works at the front desk and we tell everyone, call her mom, she's our bar mom, like if you need anything. And so she'll set up there and just talk to people if they need someone to talk to, or we'll sit down and teach games and that kind of makes them a little bit more comfortable. We have ladies night where we have ladies and non-binary participants come and we play and we just introduce them to new games and give them a safe spot to come and play. Well, that's awesome. So what do you want to have going on that you don't currently have going on? What, what's in the pipeline? So we have a few cards up our sleeves, so to speak. Um, I would like to eventually go mobile with Board to Beers to be able to branch out to communities that don't have access to come here or you know weddings, receptions, things like that, just event styles, because I do event coordinating. I did it for over a decade. So that's kind of where my heart still lies. Um, so we want to do that. And then we also want to add even more events, do community outreaches for some of our community areas like Memphis Rocks, where I rock climb, um, and just kind of reach out to even more people. We just want to spread the word to everybody and get everyone involved. So when did you discover your love of board games? Like how did you, how did you discover the hobby? So I am actually an only child. So board games were a little bit more difficult to come by when I was young, not necessarily come by, but play. Um, my parents weren't super into games, but I would always get them to watch me play Perfection, you know, the very stressful game that probably gave all of us anxiety as adults. But um, we'd play that, or Mall Madness, which so many people ask me about now. But um, when I met my husband, he is one of six. So that was a big change for me. So we, I would go over there, we'd play games, and it would get brutal. I mean. He, he has four other brothers and a sister, and everyone's competitive and wanting to win. And <laughs> so I think that really kind of um, fueled my love even more and actually had people to play with. And so after that, we started our own collection, and then we started going to board game conventions and things like that. And so it just went from there, and it is growing so fast that we are still running out of space. <laughs> okay. So I understand there is a, a an animal that lurks in the, in the hearts of board to beers. What, tell me about that. So Luna is our bar dog. She is a Pembroke Corgi and she is my emotional support animal. So opening a, a business is very stressful on its own, but um, after losing my dad and everything, it was nice to just have something there all the time that was a stress relief. And if I was starting to get overwhelmed, I'd just go and, you know, everyone wants to pet a Corgi. Who doesn't? She's you know, belongs to the queen and everything. So, and she thinks she's a queen, <laughs> so it goes hand in hand. But I mean, we have multiple animals at home. I've always been a pet person, being an only child. That's something that I always relied on, whether it was something insane like a possum or a deer or a raccoon or whatever. But now we stick to the more usual pets like dogs and cats, and we do have a hedgehog. So Luna is the lucky one that became the ESA because she's so well behaved. And so she comes up here and She's kind of everyone's emotional support animal now. People come in and they just instantly smile when they see her. So it's a good thing for her to greet people at the door. And she will absolutely greet you. She will sit in front of the door and expect you to stop and pet her or at least pay attention to her while she walks away and wants you to pet her. But she's like a cat. <laughs> so. I see. I see. So, our, so she is pettable. She is. She loves attention at home when she is with her two other siblings, um, but here she's kind of on Luna time, and she knows that people want to pet her, but she, I think, enjoys the fact that she gets to make that decision here, <laughs> whether she's going to be petted or not. It's a dog with agency. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes, people yes. come in, they're like, oh, can we pet your dog? And I'm like, well, you can try. I mean, she's not aggressive or anything, but she's just a queen. <laughs> she may wander off. Yeah. Right. She yeah, if you're, if you're lucky. So what are some of the events that are coming up that are going to be on the calendar in the next few months? So we have Fancy Gaming coming up in February, which is our Valentine's event, where you dress in your fanciest attire with your special someone or your girlfriends or whoever you want to come out with, and you just come and play board games. We um, turn it into a beautiful setting. We have 
uh, string lighting and candles on the tables and roses and things like that. So a little bit more romantic than it usually is. Um, so we have that in February. It's the Saturday before Valentine's Day on the 12th. And then we have in um, April, we have our first ever um, plant and play party. So we are going to do planters, little dice planters that my husband 3D uh, printed. And we'll plant them as succulents and we'll have um, plant inspired games out that we're going to be teaching and demoing and it's going to be on Earth Day. So we're going to be leading up to that every day of the week. We'll be doing a different plant game on our social media so that everyone gets really excited about the holiday. That's awesome. So photosynthesis and, mm -hmm. and yeah. Arboretum, right. succulent, yeah, blossoms, all those good things. All right, great. Well, this has been a, a really informative kind of short talk. Uh, how do people learn more if they want to come by? The best way to follow us would be on social media. So Instagram and Facebook are something that I keep up with almost daily, at least a few times a week. And any event that we have coming up, any new game that we have released or fancy beer that we want to feature is all going to be on Instagram and Facebook. Um, besides that, you can check the website if you don't have social media because everything does link to the website. We also have a list of our whole board game collection. It's on Board Game Geek, but it's Board Game Caddy where you can go and search our entire collection, search whatever you're looking for based off of players, time that you want to play, type of game, and it's all going to be on there and you can filter through that. So it's just about every game we have. There's a few that aren't found on there, but for the most part, it's at least over 700 games on there right now. Awesome. So um, anything else that you want to that you want to share? What's the what's the what am I drinking now? <laughs> you are drinking Woodchuck cider. So we have a few ciders here, and Woodchuck is one of our more popular ones. And I am drinking something from Hampline, and it's called Bring the Tang, and it is a orange passion fruit mimosa. And Hampline's just right down the road. It's one of our favorite breweries. Well, that sounds delicious. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. This has been um, really informative, and we can't wait to kind of get back here and hang out. Yeah, absolutely. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> hey, welcome to Board Game Nation. My name is Gary Blevins. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to get the phone. I'll be right back. <laughs> When no, it's too much drinking. I've had too much. Drink. <laughs> Let's drink more. Mm -hmm.